continuity equation. Now we're going to spend a little bit of time on the continuity equation because uh, we will also need uh, this, uh, this expression for uh, hydrodynamics. So I'm going to be a little bit more general, but still uh, using the uh, specific case, uh, considering the specific case of uh, charged particles and uh, uh, referring to the, to the current density. Okay, so what are we talking about here? We are looking for an expression that constrains the variation of a charge in a volume as a function of time. So we are going to look at the charge evolution of volumes, of little volumes of space. Okay? So let's see. The charge, you see there is a dot here, Q is the total charge of the volume V, is going to change as a, uh, evolve as a function of time by just computing its derivative with respect to time. That's obvious, right? So the integral of rho in the V over the volume is the charge. We just make the derivative with respect to time and we have the time variation of our charge for that uh, little volume. Then what we need to uh, link it to is uh, to uh, the reason why charges are actually uh, changing as a function of time. Where is this uh, origin of the change, the evolution of the change in the charge? And this is given by the fact that uh, uh, the charge within a certain volume is evolving if the charging are moving around. Okay? We can have a net flux of particles that from a certain region is, are going away from this volume, therefore the charge would uh, tend to drop. Other charges may enter in this volume, this would kind of compensate, and according to the balance between the out, output, uh, outgoing flux and ingoing flux, we are going to have a, a, a time evolution of the charge. Okay? And, uh, to, uh, and therefore, we know, we understand that we can link this uh, time variation of the charge with uh, a flux. Okay? And indeed, uh, if we go back to our three-dimensional uh, current density, rho v, this is indeed a flux. Okay? So it's a charge flux. If you look at the unit, we have that uh, Coulomb, over a volume, which is m to, the m to the power of 3, times velocity, which is meters per second. And therefore, overall, is the amount of charges per unit of surface per unit of uh, uh, time in seconds, okay? which is indeed a flux. To characterize the surfaces across which the flux is going through, we uh, use a vector. Okay? Because uh, we can have uh, a surface, such as this, uh, this, uh, this uh, cell phone, okay? and uh, you are looking in my direction, here the cross section is going to be pretty large, if I turn the surface, indeed it is becoming very small, and if it would be like an infinitesimal surface, it would become zero, if it's perfectly aligned with your line of sight. With that you understand that we need to uh, look for the orientation of the surfaces that we are considering. And therefore, it's very convenient to use vectors, okay, to characterize surfaces with a vector, where the length of the vector is proportional to the area of the surface, and uh, the direction of the vector tells you something about the orientation of the surfaces in the three-dimensional space. Now, one has to take care about the uh, conv uh, convention that is used because uh, when you consider a closed volume, which is what we are considering here when looking for the charges contained in that volume, there is an inside and, out, and an outside. And uh, we define the J dS, so that's the scalar product between the flux and the vector defining the surfaces, to be positive if the flux is outgoing the volume. So if it goes from inside to outside. Okay? Such a way, that uh, uh, if we are uh, considering a flux pointing outside, we have a loss of charges, right? Because the, the, the volume is, uh, the flux is pointing outside, and therefore we have a loss of charges. Q dot is going to become negative. So we want to keep this, this, uh, this information. If we now look... Sorry. And now that we have uh, this description of the surfaces and the, and, the, and, the, and the flux, 
linked to uh, the time variation of the charge, you see that we have that the, the change in the charge per unit of time is given by the area and the flux. In fact, you have, if you look at the units, we have J, which is unit of Coulomb, per, which is uh, in meters per seconds, in, in, in meters square per seconds. If we multiply by an area, it is m square drops, right? If we multiply per a unit of time, it is s drops, and you see that we have uh, in the Coulomb, therefore this is a charge. Okay, just the flux times the surface across which the flux is going times the time interval that we are considering. We have the total uh, charge for that uh, unit of surface for that unit, small uh, unit of time. Okay, so this is going to be the change in uh, of charge across that surface in that unit of time. And look, here we have a scalar product between the, vec the, the, the current and the surface and it makes sense that there is a, a scalar product because uh, we have j which indicates the flux which is given by a vector the surface that now you know is given by a vector and you understand that if the flux is along the surface that is uh, uh, that is described by the vector orthogonal to it it means that we have the maximum efficiency right the scalar product is just given by the product of the two modules Whereas, you have all possible combination, and if the flux is along the surface, okay, along the skin, meaning it's orthogonal to the vector uh, describing the surface, then we have zero flux. It's not going outside and inside because it's moving along the surface. There is not a, 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 a flux going out. Now, linking this concept to the initial time variation of, uh, of the charge, we see that we have just an integral over the surface, sorry, over the entire volume, so over the entire surface that is comprising the, the, the volume, of the flux times the S. And, this given, and then we set a minus here because if we have an outgoing flux, as we said before, this is defined as positive, we need a negative because the time derivative of Q is going to be negative because we have a drop in, uh, in, the, charge, uh, in the charge density. Moving a little bit forward, to have a better expression characterizing this, uh, a better representation of this expression, we can go back to the definition of Q dot, that is given here as the time variation of the integral of rho in dv, so that's what we, this is our Q dot. Q dot is going to be equal to this expression enca encapsulating the, the, the current. And now what we can do is to use the Gauss theorem in which we can uh, link an integral over a surface of a function to the integral of the gradient of that function over the volume described by the previous surface. Okay? So Whenever you have a surface, you have the integral over the entire surfaces of that function, you can express it through the Gauss theorem as the integral of the gradient of that function, but over by integrating over the volume that was captured, encapsulated by, the, by the, that uh, surface. Now you see that we have uh, on this side, we have the V, we have the V. What we do is just to bring all of this expression on the other side. And therefore, we have the, the time variation of uh, rho. So we bring our linear operator, which is a derivative, inside the integral, so that we have this uh, 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 rho dot. This one shouldn't be here, like that. So we have rho dot dv. So this is this rho dot dv. And then we have plus, because we brought it on the other side, the j, j e. Okay, so the v, in the v. And now, since this expression must be true for all volumes, so it has to be equal to zero for all volumes, it means that this guy here must be equal to zero. And we get this expression. Now, if we multiply by c and divide by c, so we are doing nothing, but we can have a expression in which you see that we have this c dt, which makes it the dx zero. 
and we have C rho, which is the first component of the four current, we can re-express this quantity in this way. Okay, in this very convenient way. This is the continuity equation. And what is expressing is charge conservation. Okay? Charges are moving around, but they are not created or destroyed. So, whenever you have a volume, the charge of that volume is going to change because charges are moving around. And the motion and the, the, how the, 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 the charge is going around is characterized by the flux. This is what the continuity equation is expressing. And we are going to have uh, basically the equivalent uh, uh, expression in a hydrodynamics when we are going to, to, to have that same construction, but uh, in that case we are going to, uh, the, 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 this equation is going to describe matter conservation. Okay? So matter is not destroyed or created, but it's just moving around. And instead of having a, a density current, we are going to have a matter 